What's up everybody, it's Seth from Fowler Customs and today I'm reviewing the Nike PG-1 Shining. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, but with all that being said, let's get into it. So today Nike decided to re-release the PG-1 in the Shining colorway, which is like the second colorway that's available, but it's the first one that I believe the public was able to grab. I was in Kansas when the shoe initially dropped, so I was only able to try for it on the sneakers app and on the Foot Locker app. There was also Yeezys dropping at the same time, so it didn't have my full attention. Usually the only way I can grab limited signatures like this is if I actually go to the Foot Locker on 34th Street or hit up a Nike store, but there isn't anything like that in Kansas, at least where I was, so I was just out of luck. There's all these restocks going down right now, and I'm filming a video, so I can't... Ah, man, this is... I hate when this happens. But because Nike was generous enough to re-release the shoe, I was finally able to grab it. I know I could have grabbed the other colorway that dropped for a review, but this is the only one I was really feeling. And this is a shoe I'm definitely planning to keep and rock, so I wanted to grab a colorway that I like, so I just kind of had to sit and wait for the right opportunity. And today was it. But as usual, before we get into the review of the shoe itself, let's take a look at the box. So here it is, the PG-1 box. You've got this sort of cream or off-white color on the top with Paul George's logo in blue. Around the sides of the box, you've got sort of this like explosion or like sound wave sort of pattern. It's interesting, it's different. It's not anything crazy. You've got Paul George's name on the side, the Nike logo on the back, and then of course the size tag on the front. Even though I was able to grab the shoe, I wasn't able to grab my size. The closest size I could grab was a nine and a half, which in some ways is good and in other ways it's not, but I'll get to that when I talk about fit later on. The official colorway is black multicolor. That's really specific. And then the retail price was 110 bucks. This is a great looking shoe and it's a solid on-court performer, so you really can't go wrong grabbing it, especially at 110 bucks. But without further ado, here it is, the Nike PG-1 Shining, or prototype. It has a couple different names. It's just the black PG-1. Starting off with the shoe, you've got this black mesh toe box that has fuse overlay on the medial side in the high wear areas. The material is pretty comfortable and seems pretty breathable, so I don't mind that they use mesh on the toe box. One of the standout features of the PG-1 is a strap that goes across the midfoot. This actually provides a surprising amount of lockdown, and the reason for that is because the strap is actually attached to a bunch of fly wire. So when you tighten the strap, it actually not only tightens the top of your foot, but also around the side of your foot too. The strap itself is made up of mesh and TPU and it is Velcro on the entire bottom side. I actually really dig the strap and not just because it provides a lot of lockdown but also because I think it looks pretty good. It's actually one of the aesthetic elements that drew me to the shoe in the first place. Moving back in the shoe you've got this black nubuck or faux suede. It's actually a really nice material and does provide a lot of structure around the midfoot and the heel of the shoe. Something that I really appreciate about this shoe and it's been brought up by a lot of other people but I totally agree with it so I kind of want to bring it up myself in my own review. The thing I really love about this signature is that they're using different kinds of materials on the back of the shoe. There's an owl right outside my window and I don't know if the mic is picking it up but that needs to stop. And the materials that they're using are actually nicer materials, things like Nubucks or faux suede, not the standard mesh and fuse overlays that you see covering the entire tops of budget model shoes. For example, another white version of this shoe is dropping next month, and it's got this sort of faux crocodile material on the side. And I really love that Paul George and the design team are looking back to the retros for inspiration and not trying to just make the cheapest, lightest shoe. The material usage just makes the shoe feel like a more quality product overall. Moving back on the shoe, you've got this hit of iridescent gold on the eye it. It's plastic, but it's actually not a bad look. I don't love the iridescent look, but because it's such a small touch, it doesn't really bother me. You've got Paul George's logo in silver on the top of the tongue. On the lateral side of the shoe, you've got the Nike swoosh facing the toe in this iridescent silver. And then on the medial side of the shoe, you've got a smaller Nike swoosh facing the heel. One interesting feature on this particular colorway of the shoe are these little numbers right here on the heel. The first eight numbers refer to the area code that he grew up in, the year he was born, and the area code of his home arena. The last four is a number that people are pretty excited about, which is the number out of 12,000 that this pair is. So for example, the pair that I have is pair 5,720 out of 12,000. I mean, that's a pretty small, subtle touch, but it kind of makes you feel like you have something special. Moving around to the back of the shoe, you've got another layer of the Nubuck just to add more support in the heel. You've also got my least favorite part of the shoe, which is this weird, sort of really sparkly, iridescent pull tab. That's the only part of the shoe I don't love. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's it's just too sparkly for me. Of course, that's not a make or break thing for the shoe, and if I really hated it that much, yeah, I could cut it off, but 
it is what it is. Of course, the shoe is a one-piece construction, so that means getting your foot in the shoe is going to be kind of tough. And that's the reason I'm kind of glad I got a nine and a half, just because it's a little bit easier for me to get my foot in there. The only problem with that, though, is that the shoe does fit pretty true to size. So I do have some room in the toe area, but it's not too big of a deal. One thing I will say, though, is that I have pretty narrow feet. So if you don't have narrow feet, you might actually want to go up half a size because this is kind of a narrow shoe. Before I get any further, I'm not planning to do a performance review of this shoe just because it's been out for about a month or two now. So there's already a lot of great performance reviews to check out. In particular, I'd recommend checking out Nightwing's performance review of the shoe if you haven't seen it yet. He does a really comprehensive tech and performance review of the shoe. So if you're interested in grabbing these to play in, I've left a link to his performance review in the description below. On the insole of the shoe, you've got this hit of neon green with Paul George's signature in orange. Moving down the shoe, you've got your Phylon midsole in black. Now one of my favorite parts of the shoe are actually these speckles in dark gray along the midsole. I think that's a really subtle and clean look and I'm stoked that they incorporated that because it looks great. And rounding off the midsole, you've got Paul George's number embossed on the heel. Finally moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this semi-translucent outsole in this sort of iridescent blue. The multicolor iridescence on the outsole actually matches the iridescence on the Nike swoosh. And I actually think it's a cool touch. I've never seen that done on an outsole before. I don't know how well this traction is going to perform because I haven't played in these yet. I've heard good things, but I've heard better things about the solid rubber compound. So if you're trying to grab this shoe for basketball, maybe go for an option that has solid rubber on the outsole. But for just everyday wearing around, I think this looks great. On the midfoot, you've got Paul George's logo again in neon green. And then one of the best parts of the shoe is the bottom loaded zoom that you find on the ball of your foot. On the right shoe, it's sort of like an orange pinkish color. And then on the left shoe, it's in green. I really dig the two-tone look. It's not something that you're ever really going to see, but kind of dig it anyway. Overall, I think this is a great shoe. I think this is an excellent first signature shoe, especially for 110 bucks. You can't really go wrong whether you're wearing it for lifestyle or for basketball. I love the more premium or premium feeling materials that they're using on the midfoot. I think that's awesome. I love the overall look of the shoe. I love that it's a low top. I really dig this strap. I just, I can't say enough good things about this shoe. I just hope that Nike's able to follow up this sneaker with something just as good next year. And I mean, for 110 bucks, this is a steal. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's throw these guys on feet and see how they look. That's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the PG-1 and if you're planning to grab a pair for yourself. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to Fowler Customs if you want to see more content just like this. And follow Fowler Customs on Snups, Instagram, and on Twitter.